Hi everyone, happy Pride Month. My name is Emily and today I will be setting up June 2022 in my bullet journal. I am continuing my tradition of doing a Pride theme for June. So my theme this month is Legend of Korra and there will be lots of rainbows, so don't you worry. <laughs> and I'm really excited to show you all how it turns out. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I post new bullet journal setups every month and all of my themes are based on TV shows and movies. Starting per usual with the cover page, I really wanted to do a two page cover page this month and I was inspired by this picture that I found online which I believe is the Legend of Korra Blu-ray set artwork. Doing a Legend of Korra theme, I of course had to include the titular character, but I also really wanted to do some artwork inspired by Rava, so this picture was perfect. However, instead of coloring in Korra's usual colors, you'll see that I am painting in with random blotches from the Pride Flag Rainbow. Another thing I really wanted to do this month was use watercolors in my setup and they achieved the effect I was going for in the painting. I leave Korra's eyes and where Rava is white because she's in the avatar state and I also wanted Rava to stand out against the rainbow colors. I had so much fun painting this drawing and I'm really happy with how it turns out. I hemmed and hawed while painting Cora if I wanted to include a quote on this page or not. I wasn't sure if the painting would have more impact being on its own, but ultimately I decided it was looking a little empty around Cora, so I wrote the Uncle Iroh quote, if you look for the light, you can often find it, but if you look for the dark, that is all you will ever see. Iroh says this to Cora when she sees him in the spirit world, which has got to be one of my favorite moments of the Legend of Korra series. I thought this crossover of characters was just so wholesome, and I'm pretty sure I cried when Iroh showed up. <laughs> I actually included this quote in my Avatar The Last Airbender setup that I did last April, which I will link above if you want to check it out. But I love this quote so much, I wanted to use it again for this setup too. I tried to paint the June title in the same style as the Avatar font, which looks like it was done with a calligraphy brush, but it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to, but I tried not to focus too much on it since I was really happy with how the rest of the cover page turned out. <laughs> For all of my monthly trackers and my weeklies, I decided to do a Dutch door setup. If you watch my channel frequently, you know I love a Dutch door. I wanted to paint the sides as rainbows using the same technique that I use on the cover page so that you can see the decoration on each page. I also brought back tabs, which I don't think I've attempted since my December setup. I really struggled to make them look nice last time, but I think that was because I made the tabs really small, 
so it was kind of awkward to cut them out so this time i made the dimensions of the tabs bigger so that they're easier to cut around and actually use and then of course i'm just painting the same technique on the other side with the rainbow splotches For the colors of the tabs and my monthly task boxes, since there are only four of each, I decided to use colors that I thought represent the four nations of the Avatar universe. So red for Fire Nation, orange for Air Nomads, green for Earth Kingdom, and blue for the Water Tribes. Going back to the front of these pages, I am setting up my important dates for June. And I had the idea to write the days of the week in different colors of the pride flag. And I just love how this turns out so much. I end up doing it for all of my spreads. It just adds a nice pop of color. I realized from my past two monthly setups that I actually really like using bright, cheerful colors because it makes me happy to look at when I go through and use all my spreads each day. I'm continuing my technique from last month where I made the habit tracker purposely crooked so that way if I use the stamp crooked it's no big deal. I'm of course using the pride rainbow colors with my watercolors as the background. Next to that I have my sleep tracker where I try to paint sleep like a rainbow but it doesn't really work like I want it to. So I go back later and outline it and draw some sparkles because sparkles make everything better, let's be honest. And in case you're interested, the habits I'm tracking this month are reading, writing, eating fruits and veggies, meditating, skincare, watering my plants, and going for walks. Next up is my mood tracker, where I thought it would be cute to draw one of the Four Nations symbols based on my mood for that day. But because I usually track five different moons, I also attempted to draw the symbol for the White Lotus for the fifth mood. Beside that is my fitness tracker, which is pretty simple and self-explanatory. For my weeklies, I'm using the same setup I did last month because it actually worked really well for me. At the top, I have space for a rolling to-do list, and then at the bottom, I have space to write down daily to-do lists. This works for me because then on days where I have a lot to do, I can write basically as much as I want, and then on days where I don't have anything going on, I don't need to make a to-do list at all, so it saves space. And for decoration on my weeklies, I add rainbows and washi tapes to all the corners. For my gratitude tracker, I am going back to what I did in January and February, where I have a landscape scene from the TV show or movie. And within that scene, I have space to write down things I am grateful for throughout the month. For this drawing, I was inspired by this picture, which I'm pretty sure is the first promo image that was ever released for The Legend of Korra way back when it was announced. I remember seeing this and being so excited that the next Avatar was going to be a girl. And then I was so confused because the internet exploded with so much negativity about Korra before it even aired. I have of course become more educated since then and realized that sexism definitely played a role in why so many people were already hating on Korra, which is of course a shame. And honestly, I still think that goes on to this day. Is Legend of Korra a perfect show? No, far from it, but it's still a great show, and Korra as a character honestly means so much to me. It was probably the first time I really saw myself in a female cartoon character, so I was really grateful to finally have a character like her. So just to color this picture, I tried to um, do it as the same colors as the inspo picture. So it kind of doesn't go with the rest of the spread. That's very like neutral colored, but 
I'm so happy with how it turned out. I wasn't sure how to make it rainbow um, to go with the rest of the pages. And I didn't want to like do it all as a rainbow. And then it like looked terrible because it was like way too much going on. So I just ended up doing the neutral colors. And of course I set up my monthly review, very simple, next to my gratitude page. And then on the back, I am doing a six month check-in, just because, you know, halfway through the year, I thought it would be a good time to just check in with my goals, what I'm feeling and thinking about the year so far, and then how I'm feeling about the last six months of the year ahead. All right, this being a Legend of Korra theme and Pride Month, I could not go this whole setup without including the iconic final scene of the series. This is the moment where Korra and Asami walk hand in hand into the spirit world and Korra Asami was confirmed canon and my heart was so happy. <laughs> June is the last month I'm able to fit in my current bullet journal. So I thought this scene would be the perfect way to also close out my bullet journal. It's definitely not a perfect drawing as I'm super rusty with anatomy and watercolor doesn't work the best on bullet journal paper, but I think it still turns out pretty cute. I remember watching this moment live back when the finale aired in 2014 with my friends and when we saw Korra Asami walking toward the spirit world holding hands, we all jumped off the couch and started screaming and cheering. I'm pretty sure I cried and honestly, I get a little emotional every time I think about it. I had been shipping Korasami since the beginning of season three, so the fact that it actually became canon like blew my mind. I was seriously not expecting it to actually happen because in 2014, this sort of representation in Western animation was basically unheard of. I didn't know I was queer when I watched this moment for the first time, but looking back, I realized how important that moment was not only to me and the fandom, but representation in general. It was truly amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing so that you can keep up with all my bullet journaling content. Again, my monthly themes are based on TV shows and movies, and it has been a lot of fun doing it for the last year and a half. And I can't believe I've been doing YouTube for a year and a half. Thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. Thank you so much for 200 followers. Again, happy Pride Month to all my fellow LGBTQIA plus folks out there watching. Keep being you and take care until next time.